What up, everybody? Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Off the Record, which you know about because you're regular listeners of the Smoking Tire Podcast, and Off the Record is a regular sponsor. They help you get out of terribly unfair, stupid speeding fines. They stink. Nobody likes them. Nobody likes them. You know they're not keeping people safe. They're just raising money for insurance companies and courts and cops, things like that. If you get pulled over, don't plead guilty. Pleading guilty is for suckers. Instead, call off the record. OTR, baby, off the record. will pair you up with a qualified attorney in the jurisdiction in which you got pulled over. And for a very reasonable price, they'll fight that ticket on your behalf. Get those points off your record. And if they don't, you don't pay. Money back guarantee. They have an unbelievable success rate, like over 95%. They cover almost every jurisdiction in the country. Not every, but almost. And uh, they can fight everything from very small tickets to very, very big tickets. All you got to do is go to offtherecord.com slash TST or download the Off The Record app and use code TST. 10. That will get you uh, 10% off all legal services booked through Off the Record. On the web, offtherecord.com slash TST, or code TST10 on the Off the Record app. Then if you get a ticket, you just make that account ahead of time so you're ready to go, you're booked up, and then if you get a ticket, snap a photo of it, scan the ticket, send it to Off the Record, they will deal with the rest. Very, very easy. Offtherecord.com slash TST. Code TST10 on the app gets you 10% off those legal services booked through Off the Record. It's golden. Don't plead guilty. Go to Off the Record instead. Okay, folks, we are back in the studio today, and we've got a visitor from out of town. Two of them, in fact. Freddie Tavares Hernandez, our old pal, YouTuber, uh, mechanic, uh, person who takes on projects that are way bigger than they have any right to be. Freddie Tavares Hernandez is here, and he's brought Arnie Toman, who is uh, a cannonballer, uh, a tuner, a mechanic. He is the owner and founder of the Cannonball Garage, which you may have heard of, may have seen on Instagram. Former Cannonball record holder. In fact, he may be a current Cannonball record holder. Got a double check that one. And uh, they have just brought uh, Freddie's newly repaired McLaren 675LT out to Jay Leno after spending two weeks replacing a completely blown engine, which that's a lot of time to spend, but at the same time, it should really take a lot longer. So they've got the story of that. We talk about tuning McLarens. Uh, we talk about YouTube. We talk about all that good stuff and uh, and more with Freddie and Arnie on the Smoking Tire podcast. Yeah, let's do it. That's how it is. Hello. The, um, hello. Hello. Hello, everybody. I just watched the Anthony Bourdain uh, Parts Unknown in Armenia, so I really feel I can say hello. <laughs> <laughs> You got it down. Uh, that's, how, I, that's how culture works. Every <laughs> accent yeah. I do becomes Middle Eastern by the second sentence. It's, <laughs> it's pretty, pretty, pretty known at this point. Uh, welcome to the West Side, guys. Hey, yeah. uh, it's, uh, it's nice to be here. That van is really something. It yeah, really is. It is. Vans are in. American vans are in. Scotto just bought a fucking E Series Ford van. Yeah, I've been, I've been in the van game for a long time. Yeah, you are Mr. Van. Is that a cannonball thing or just a? Practicality. No, no thing. it's a practicality thing. You know, I stumbled into one in the, uh, on the in the early days of AMS performance. We needed some sort of tow vehicle, and we couldn't afford anything. And I found a '98 Chevy van that was used for hot shotting. It was like three years old. I got it for it was three used for what? Hot shotting. What's hot shotting? It's like moonshine. No, what is a, that? So if you've got like a. Isn't that when you overdose from heroin? <laughs> yes, exactly. That's what vans are for. Yeah, yeah. No, you no, it's, it's like vehicle van. delivery or something, right? No, it's a, it's like it's like medical delivery. Like say you're in Chicago, oh, oh. And you need something in New York, like overnight. Like oh. these, you pay these guys like an exorbitant amount of money. Oh. And, uh, you know, Do they so, have a license to speed, or are they just taking a lot of caffeine and driving? Yeah, just a lot night? of caffeine. Oh, okay, uh, I guess. But I didn't know if we were talking about like transcon medevac type situation. No. Is there a license to speed? Does that exist? I mean, yeah, it's called being a cop. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I mean, Fine. basically, yes. You know, that we would like there to be a license to speed, but yeah. pff, America, we're not gonna, we're not mature. Well, I mean, enough. no, no other country has one of those. No, I mean Germany. I mean, there's places with with unlimited speed sections of road. Yeah, but, but a regular license will get you there. 
Correct. Yeah. 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 Oh. An American license will get you there. So I. I yeah, that's true. I, so all you need, all you really need, is an American license and, and a trip to, to Germany to be in a civilized Boom. nation. Yeah. That exactly. Has, that that was or, that we got things organized over here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One, one can argue they they've made some mistakes in the okay, past. Okay. So it's the, the running of medical. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or it's just just yeah. anything they need to get some. Nobody's fast. perfect. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, come on. Fucking. <laughs> in the positive, traffic really went down around 1946. <laughs> yeah. uh, a lot, lot less people on the road. <laughs> lot the family guy bent, is like, we're on vacation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so that's what hot shotting is. Yeah, yeah. so I, I picked up this uh, 98 diesel Chevy van for 3000 bucks, and we use it as a tow vehicle. And I'd never been into vans, but I just found it so useful. And I don't know, now I'm like 20 diesel vans later. <laughs> yeah, they are. I mean, they're, they're the same as a fucking Super Duty, just mm -hmm. a box on top instead of yeah, a... I like it. Yeah, I like it because your stuff doesn't get wet. It doesn't get yeah. stolen. You know, mm -hmm. when, when I went from pickup truck to minivan in 2003... 2013, excuse me, life got much better. Yeah, I oh, said yeah. people need to give a minivan a try. Fuck. They get a bad rap, but if you spend a couple of days in one, like I you're know. hooked. I we have a, a real problem in this country with un understanding the coolness of minivans. Yeah. Until you get to Sprinter, for some reason, once you arrive at a minivan with a Mercedes badge on the front, different story. Oh, God. Well, yeah. he, he literally just bought one. I was going to say, I thought you were just say you just fucking lemon lawed one or something. No, no. no. Oh, yeah. After after the show, we're actually heading up to San Francisco, and I'm picking up. A... <laughs> Is it like an overlandy one? Uh, it's sort of. It's not four wheel drive, uh -huh. but it's it's set up. Uh, it's got the adventure wagon kit, so it's got like a bed in it and stuff. So oh, okay. it's more of a traveling van. Okay. So I'm going to try out the Sprinter thing. So it's like road trip life. Yeah. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just can... you or four no? Of... Me and the family. Family. Yeah. How many people are going to be in this van? Uh, four. Just me, me and my wife and my two kids. It's a lot of people. Long wheelbase, short wheelbase. Base? Tall, uh, roof? tall roof, 144 inch of standard wheelbase. That's a small van for four people. Yeah. I know people do it, but that's a small van. I guess. Yeah, well, we road trip in the you know the 2500 that you saw me pull up in. Okay, do and, you tent uh, camp or what do, you, do you sleep in the van? No, we sleep in the van. You do? And usually, we're not like campers, it's just usually we want to get places. So I'll drive overnight, my kids and my wife will sleep. And, oh, uh, wow. We like to just get places. Oh, this quickly. is like the, wow. this is the uh, they call it hot shotting. Have you ever heard of it? Yeah, <laughs> it's the it's the it's, the, uh, it's what it's what retired cannonball people do. Yes. yes. drive through the night and let your family yeah. sleep. His family has to get delivered to the national <laughs> park <laughs> by six a.m. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what are you guys doing in town? Well, we just came from uh, Jay Leno's garage yesterday. We were filming with Jay um, for my McLaren six seventy five LT. Oh, that's cool. And uh, that only got here because. Um, well, the, the producer called me and uh, said, hey, would you like to be on the show? And I was like, sure. But I wanted the McLaren to, to, to be there. I know Jay's a big McLaren fan. What were you going to do without it? Well, uh, I have a Ferrari bring, bring 430. A million mile Lexus? Yeah, we yeah. could do that. Yeah. We could do that. Uh, but uh, I was going to do a 430 Scuderia that we manual swapped. Right. And uh, But I was like... Jay's not a Ferrari fan. I don't really feel like this. This <laughs> Jay is, holds such a grudge against how Ferrari treated him in the eighties. Yes, he'll never yeah. let it go. Yeah, yes. yeah so there wasn't funny. a Ferrari in that. In his, no, he in doesn't his, no. own one. He'll never buy one. There, there was actually there's there a three hundred eight, yeah. and he makes yeah. sure to tell you it's, it's not. It's his. not his. Not his. Yeah. That's yes. fucking <laughs> Bernard's. It's not mine. Yeah. I'm never <laughs> buying one of those fucking things. Enzo yeah. was a fucking asshole. It's really funny. A guy holds a grudge. Yeah. So. Uh, I blew the engine in the 675 LT about six months ago. At least you did it on video. I did, and yeah. that was I was very fortunate yeah. um, because I was doing it with a bunch of YouTubers, and they all had you know GoPros and stuff out, so that was good. Um, but uh, then the car just sat for like five months, and I asked Arnie. I said, "Hey, I'm going on Jay Leno's garage in about two weeks. Is there any way that we could uh, build an engine for this car in like no time at all?" And he says, well, we can only do it if I leave right now. And he's in Chicago. I'm in Orlando. So uh, he left. I, I gave him a call. And about an hour and a half later, he was on the road, like to and my house. you did house. it at your shop? No. Where did no, you do we it? Did it? We did it at my shop. Cannonball, Cannonball Garage. Which is in Chicago. in Chicago. So why did you have to leave Chicago? Because they picked up the car. Oh. But just there was no time for transport or anything. Oh. You yeah. know, we, get, we have a, you know, a car with oh. a blown engine in it. We got to pull it apart, take off the heads. 
build uh, you know, build a four liter. If you had called West Side Collector Car Storage to arrange the transport of this vehicle next day, you could have saved yourself a drive from Chicago to Florida. Well, that's, and I that's don't good. know. This guy's pretty fast. I, I hear he's all right. <laughs> You're the trailer? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was there in 24 hours. Yeah, less than he was there hours. the next day. And then we loaded up the car. I'm and then you, your time is worth more than that, <laughs> probably. <laughs> well, Someone you know has what? not done the math on this. Sir, a friend you don't know need. where we stayed in the last few days, so that's... You that, have a van. I know exactly yeah. where you stayed. <laughs> <laughs> that's also called hot shotting. Yes. Uh, yeah. But uh, so I, I get there, you know, Sunday night, and then between Monday and the following Monday, we take the engine out. Me and uh, the engine builder, Arnie, I mean, uh, Arnie, uh, Ivan, you're Arnie. Um, Ivan is... Like, like he knows everything there is to know about like building engines. He's done a, a bunch of McLaren engines, but he used to do you know Evos, GTRs, uh, two Js, you know all that stuff. He knows you know he loves the the minutia of um, you know bearing clearances and and rod bolts and blah blah blah. So we take this thing out and we got it out in like it has to have been record time because yeah. you know I've been through this car. You know I know where all the bolts are and he he knows his way around McLaren. So we take it out. And we take the whole thing apart, and we realize that it has like you know three holes in the block. Two of the rods oh, are missing. Really? We bent all eight rods. Wow! At like, once? At, yeah, yeah. Wow. The thing Good is, job. McLaren McLaren uses really pencil thin rods for the 675 and the P1. By the way, yeah. Is that it, to reduce rotating mass? Yeah. So they found the they found the they found the line. Yeah. And they went one percent conservative from where it would explode. Yeah. I don't even think that. Well, even <laughs> you know the weak link in all McLarens is the rods, mm-hmm. but the 675 they went extra weak yeah. on it. Yeah, and uh, like you don't want to like a 675 like you don't want to tune it at all. Yeah, it's Ooh. it's it's real so, bad. So I did that, and yeah. that's why my rods blew. Uh, so we um, took a 720 block. I remember when you did it, you were like, I have the most powerful 675 on the planet. I was like, cool, man. And, <laughs> Not uh, for long. <laughs> and like a month later, you punched yeah. three holes in the block. <laughs> I was like, huh. Well, you find what happened it? to the most powerful 675? <laughs> no, well, it's, it's true. the least powerful 675. Well, it was true. Listen, it runs really good until it doesn't. It ran real good for five minutes. Yeah. yeah. But I was giving everybody rides. I mean, we did, we did 1,500 miles on that tune. We did track days, dyno runs, all that stuff, and uh, it was fine until it wasn't. So I, I, uh, I replaced some uh, air filters because the air filters were all clogged up. Um, put some uh, new air filters, and I'm like, this car drives great. It's so fast. And then I take. Um, it turns out the air filters were holding the rods <laughs> yes, together. Yes. Yes. If you had, li- <laughs> yeah, by not allowing enough air in, exactly, the engine was actually saving itself. Yeah. Oh man. And then an when I put the air filters in, I was like, oh, oh, we can breathe again and then the rod just go i'm gonna i'm gonna head out um so so that yeah we uh we did um Corolla rod cp pistons uh we you know, i like how the lesson wasn't just put it back together to stock no the no lesson. oh no that's never no <laughs> it's it's ter- like stock While is you're terrible in there. While no, you're in there. stock is terrible in a 675 yep. dude i've done 190 miles an hour on like a two-lane road in a 675 that car is so fast yeah there's no reason that that car needs to be any faster it uh, does yeah. though it does it does though <laughs> because uh here's here's what you can't do in any mclaren low-end torque and my mclaren now you can do low-end torque. sure but do you need that yes why so you have a mid range, and uh, you have like. But those a w- cars rev so good, like you're, you know, you you could keep that car from four to eight thousand RPM all the time. Like doesn't matter. Yeah, but now you have diesel torque at <laughs> three thousand RPM wait until you blow the fucking next set of rods. No, it's no, it's on the record. You're no. like diesel torque. No, fucking a these, thousand miles. So later. these rods. Hold Paul McLaren is leaving a puddle for for the context in stock form. The six seven five makes peak torque five sixteen uh, pound feet at five thousand RPM. So you yeah. did right. drop it by quite. A bit. So, so this is 3,500 RPM. Uh, well, it makes 680 torque, but uh, has 600 of that at around like before 3,500. It makes 680 torque Six, now. 680 torque. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's gotta be fun. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and the turbos aren't like gigantic. So the, the car's not making. I mean, the car made. I think it was like 680, 680. So 680 wheel, it would be like almost 800 crank, something like that. It's so like it's, what a 720 does. Yeah. yeah. So, well, something it, like it's that. limited by the turbos. It is limited by the turbos. So like we we didn't want to go super crazy. I, I don't want a car with a billion horsepower. I just wanted something reliable. So this car, like each rod can hold apparently 200 horsepower per cylinder. So Was, was there a big weight difference between the new rods you put on and no. the ones you – No. No. Okay. 
No, they're they're forged steel. The the, the thing is with the uh, the McLarens, like if you look at like weight differences, it's it's actually not that much when you go into the aftermarket. Uh, and then when you go to the aftermarket, you can have stuff that handles way more power. You can custom size it. Um, like our our rods were, I think, like end to end, they were like a little bit uh, shorter, so you can get uh, a little a little more boost in there, lower the compression ratio, yeah, that sort of bit, thing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, so we, you, do you de-stroke it? Uh, n- no, I mean it's. It's like very minute. Yeah, uh, minute. It's shorter. just the smallest amount because um, Ivan found out that this is really geeky. But uh, when you have like a stock 720 and you get a lot of carbon buildup on the piston, sometimes the uh, intake valves can hit and they can make oh. like yeah. yeah so it's, it's, that's a pretty they're tight built, tolerance. They're built really, really, so, really tight. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so when you start modifying them, then you know. Yeah. So it was like two thousandths or something, you know, uh, less tall, and uh, that you know that makes the difference. But we had quite a bit of issue, you know, putting everything together because in that week, not only do we have to put the engine together, but we had to do the R and D for putting a four liter in a three point eight car. You got a new block. Yeah, yeah. We 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 had already well, we had been talking about doing something mm-hmm. with this and uh, with the six seventy five and the P one. Yeah. So we actually had sourced a four liter out of a, a seven twenty that mm-hmm. we just kind of had waiting. For him to decide what to do, out of like it's a, a bear crash block in a car, car or something. Yeah, yeah. So we had What's we a 720 block cost. Well, I mean, here's the thing with McLaren: you cannot buy any bottom end components for a McLaren. You have to buy them. You, ha- you, you have to buy if you if you put a, yeah. a rod through your block, your option is find a used engine that doesn't have a rod through the block, mm-hmm. or you have to buy a crate engine that yeah. that includes like intake manifold, injectors, yeah, yeah. air conditioning compressor, alternator, yeah. turbos. It's the entire thing. The block like, there is no it, yeah. short block, and that's eighty two thousand dollars. It's a business model. Yeah, it right. Really is. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So they they sell uh, McLaren sells cylinder heads uh-huh. in in components or fully dressed crate engine. <laughs> yeah. So, so we you know, so we had, we, yeah. you know, fortunately, a lot of people crash those cars. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, I, I guess so. So <laughs> turns out they're real fast. They're very crashable. <laughs> yeah. 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 So when we, started, when we started, when we started talking, we knew we were doing something. So mm-hmm. I located a motor and we had it cleaned and ready. And just we had everything ready for him. Uh-huh. It just was getting this phone call, you know, two weeks before, like, hey, we got to be in Southern California at Jay Leno's garage. Yeah. Yeah, and sounds uh, like a television show. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we, we we documented everything, but it's uh, it was interesting because we still had like as soon as I got the engine out, we still had to do head work on it because like the 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 piston went up and like it bent like a few of the valves, so we had to send this head out to a local shop and they got it done in a day. Yeah, it was like, done in twelve hours. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, we just we made a couple phone calls. We were like, "Look, man, we got to get this done." But it was like every, that's how it works on TV too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You guys are describing a reality. We're going to lose yeah. the shop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this customer is going to be real mad. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> the customer is also working on the car. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, it was interesting. We ran into a lot of uh, little. Um, uh, speed bumps where uh, McLaren actually changed the uh, head gasket design. It went from a three layer to a two layer. They made it uh, thinner, and then we started calling around to all the McLaren dealerships, and they don't know what the hell is going on uh, because nobody's ever like put together a McLaren engine. Yeah, because the dealerships get complete engines. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Nobody, nobody does this. Apart. Yeah. So uh, you know, we confirmed, and then that you know that turned out to be good. I got new timing components, new like literally new everything. We did everything as you know as per the McLaren technical service manual or whatever and uh you know put the engine in the car car started right up like no drama no nothing no leaks uh and then we got it on the dyno uh ran it in on a dyno did about 35 miles or something just kind of decelerating and stuff and then uh yeah and then just trailered it out here <laughs> where uh, fun fact i actually have not driven the car i haven't driven my own car uh ivan drove it when he was doing his uh you know street runs and then jay leno drove it why didn't you drive it because I didn't have any time. Yeah, there was. I mean, this was like down to the wire. Like yeah. Monday night, we we're loading the thing in the trailer, got some sleep. Tuesday morning, first thing, we're gone. Yeah. Did, did Jay enjoy it? Oh yeah, he loved it. Jay's a McLaren guy. Yeah, yeah. 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 He lo- he drives his P1 a lot. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's that's what he says. And I mean, I a lot for a guy with a hundred cars. It, I mean, it's exactly. Like, it probably has two thousand miles on it, but that's a lot yeah. for you know. But it's it's um you know it was interesting because he kept on asking like so this is a salvage title like so this is you know <laughs> I think there's a little bit of old school mentality is like well this car drives straight I don't, yeah. I don't get it you know <laughs> you you could tell me this car is brand new I would not you know yeah 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 
He's a solid dude, though. He's a yeah. really good. I mean, you know who's really talented? His plastic surgeon. Oh yeah, his face looks oh, like no, it wasn't looks, on fire ever. It, dude, yeah, it's he looks crazy. Great. He looks younger. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. While you're in there, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. while you're in, there, you got to put new rods in. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Was, did Donnie work on this? Because uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, there's a lot of while you're in this. Did so, you find some other while you're in theirs uh, on well, the with, car? Oh, with, uh, I mean, other I, than the fact that there were holes in the engine. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. To fit the block, did you have to make new engine mounts or? No, or, no. It's so, the so same. Like that, right? so, yeah. The yeah. block is right. physically the same. The problem is in the transmission. Uh, but well, it's, uh, so, some physical difference. There is some physical differences. So you ha- with, if you have a 720 block, um, you have to use the uh, bell housing of the 720 transmission. Uh, because uh-huh. there's a, this thing called a DLD. It's almost like a clutch and flywheel. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's, you know, long story short, it just won't fit on the uh, 3.8. Like, it's just too too long or too short, and uh, the starter won't engage. Uh, so we found out that uh, we found yeah. that out the hard way in the 11th hour, and then yeah. we were scrambling. And then, you know, thankfully, you had a 720 transmission that we could take apart. And then, yeah. you know, I, co- I collect a lot of used McLaren stuff because you never know. Well, if you can't you buy the shit, <laughs> well, right? No, no you can't buy the it, stuff. So it's like it sooner or later. Yeah, I'm always buying up. Yeah, you know, odds and ends that I find. Yeah. So now we have like a complete bolt on. You know, so you have to turn liter. your gearbox into a 720 gearbox, basically. Um, just like just the bell housing and also the uh, the DLD, the driveline damper. Uh-huh. So just just those are 720 components, and then the rest is regular 3.8. Right. Folks, got to take a quick break from the action for Groove Life. They are a sponsor of today's podcast, and they are reinventing everyday carry. Look, it's 2023. Are you still using the same wallet, EDC, from 2003? Now is time to update that wallet game with Groove Life. The Groove Wallet is a sleek, low-profile wallet engineered for everyday use. With one swipe of the thumb, it perfectly fans out up to six cards for for easy access to find everything you need. Let them know you've got six credit cards. Probably not. you probably got a driver's license, maybe a health insurance card, maybe Costco membership. Maybe you've got one credit card and five things that just kind of look like credit cards. That works too. It's not like Dan Aykroyd in Trading Places where he's got 75 credit cards in his wallet. Uh, But with the durable, high-quality aluminum outer shell, the wallet is unlike any wallet I have seen before. It looks totally bomb proof it looks like something you'd see in a sci-fi movie totally for the modern era and whatever happens to your groove life gear they are here to help they've got a 94 year no bs warranty 94 years who's going to outlive that warranty i mean the average lifespan of a man in america is like 72 you're going to pass it on to your grandkids they're going to file the warranty on that i hope it's no bs you're gonna have to pass that wallet and a receipt to your grandkids they want to claim that warranty they ta- uh, just launched the new attachment the groove wallet go it's a low profile companion to your wallet uh, or your iphone 12 13 or 14 it uses micro suction technology it adds three cards plus cash to the back of your phone it's so slim you can fit it in your front pocket you'll barely know it's there i tried that one to put the things on the back of the phone i like it you don't always want to carry your wallet sometimes it's just license and 40 bucks maybe a license and a credit card when you're going out leave the rest of your wallet at home it's clutch and groove life makes more than just wallets they've got belts rings watch bands airpod cases and more they now provide for over a hundred families they started as just a side project but it's an american company recognized by inc magazine as one of the fastest companies in growing companies in the usa Bring your wallet into the 21st century. Head over to GrooveLife.com slash tire for 20% off all Groove Life products. Uh, that's the best offer you'll find, but you've got to use my link, GrooveLife.com slash tire, 20% off your order. One last time, that's GrooveLife.com slash tire for 20% off your order. And now back to the show. I forgot, I almost forgot this. Uh, we had to change the mount on the transmission because the way that the engine mounts, there's like uh, three dog bone mounts in the front uh, that connect to the front of the engine. But in the back of the engine, there's a uh, mount on top of the transmission and there's a bolt through it. Because the 720 transmission is too long, that mount will no longer fit. So you need a 720 mount. Oh. The only way you get that mount out is if you have a McLaren tool, and guess what we didn't have? Oh, shit. So That's like Ivan, the one tool I don't have. Exactly. Well, now I do, though. So Ivan, <laughs> Ivan used to be a machinist, 
and he came in at six in the morning and made the tool. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So like he, he, he it measured. Was like a snake you know, wrench thing. I had to go like up and over. Thing. Well, no, it's like a press tool. Yeah, it was like a press tool. Okay. So you have like this cap in the back, and you have this all thread, and it just pushes it out. And like he spent probably the better part of that day just making that tool. But oh the second gosh. we used it, it was like 30 seconds. It was like, well, yeah, oh, well, we, didn't awesome. have, we didn't have now a choice, got, though, because it was, got the tool. we, we yeah. found this out in, in, on Friday night at 6 p.m. Oh, yeah. Is yeah. when we found out we needed to do it. So yeah. like, but, And the engine is like right there. It's like, we got to put this in, but we can't we, we can't put this uh, in with this mount. Um, what is McLaren geez. charge for the tool? Will they even sell you the tool? Probably not. I don't even yeah, think the, McLaren knows the tool <laughs> exists. Like, nobody does this. <laughs> Um, yeah, because yeah, again, they'll only sell you a rear subframe with a transmission attached yeah. to it. <laughs> yeah. We'll sell you the whole car. Do you want the whole car? Was it yeah. some? Was it like an incredibly complicated bushing press, bearing press type thing? Like it, it's weird it's not incredibly complicated, but it's like the tolerances are like okay. you, you. If you do it wrong, you'll be pressing into like rubber, and you might you might you know gall wow. it up. Um, but I mean, you know, Ivan's a Ivan knows what he's doing. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's why but, that's why it's always good to have a manual mill and lathe and yeah. Yeah. Well, fabrication yeah. equipment around. What's great is that uh, Arnie in the back of his shop, uh, he has a full CNC <laughs> like machine shop uh, with like every everything you might need. So yeah, yeah it's uh, and that's going like what twenty four hours a day now. Yeah, yeah, that's my my other business MDI where we Which do is what. Uh, it's a CNC machine shop. We do uh, military drone parts, uh, firearm parts, some other odds and ends. Do some automotive stuff. I still make a couple things for AMS performance, but but it's like yeah, primarily have, military drone stuff. So you have you have like a, a, you know McLarens and GTRs and stuff, and in the back you just have all, like like these workers <laughs> You're just yeah. making robotic dogs doing yeah, stuff yeah, in the back. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's a great security system because we actually we literally run twenty four hours a day, seven yeah. days a week, the machine shop. So. Yeah, but it's yeah. Uh, that it's, is it's a good security system. Always present. Yes, yes. exactly. Yeah. But that's that's fucking crazy, dude. That, that these that you could do that so fast is mm -hmm. it really makes me think about how long it takes people to, to work on my car. Well, well here, well, here's like, the thing. Listen, I, I you need... guys need a little more pressure applied to you <laughs> yeah, I, I, because a month to service my NSX is fucking bullshit. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I do have to preface this. It's not. This isn't like a normal thing yeah. to happen. Yeah. Right? It's not yeah. something you want to brag to your regular customers about. Yeah. Like, by the right. way, we rebuilt yeah. this motor yeah. in a week. Um, I think. Well, it's also because I was also there the entire time. Yeah. And it was like, basically, uh, you know, four hands on deck. Yeah. You know, yeah. for. 12, 14, 16 hours a day. Yeah. 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 Freddie was like an unpaid intern who knew what he was doing. Like, hey, yeah, you can work no. here for the weekend. <laughs> that's Bare, like, barely, what's, what's yeah. that, uh, you know, the, the, the sign at every shop that's like, $100 for me to find it and fix it. $150 for you to diagnose it. And then, you know, $300 for you to help. You know, like, yeah, it was, it, was, it was sort of like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with, uh, dude, but yesterday was like, it was such a bucket list thing for me. Um, you know, to, to go to Jay's Garage. Because I've been, you been there before. I'd never been there oh. before. You didn't go there with the Mercy? No. Oh, no, no, no. Well, you no we, we were supposed to, and oh. then we never did. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so, it's pretty cool, right? Yeah. It's, uh, it's, so I've been watching him for more than a day. I mean, my entire adult life. I've been watching, you know, Jay Leno's Garage. And he looks skinny in that picture, man. He oh, he been, did. He lost some weight. Been, looks like John yeah, he Goodman. Looks good. in the he looks good. He looks good. New shots. Yeah. Yeah. He looks. He looks pretty good. Yeah. It turns out. I mean, listen. We should all have our faces lit on fire and reevaluate our lives, <laughs> and we'll drop some weight in our senior years. He's it's fine. Right. Yeah, I, yeah. I asked him when we were driving. I'm like, hey, any uh, any? He's like, nah, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I saw him like pretty soon after that, and he was shockingly good. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, his producer was telling us the story, and I was like, "That was gnarly." Dude, like, don't fuck with steam cars, man. No, Those shits are mad dangerous. Mm -mm. Yeah. We, we saw the car that did it. Yeah, yeah. It was... I'd fucking cast that thing out with the wolves. Dude. That was <laughs> you shoot set me it on like fire, Elvis. I'm done with you. Yeah, that's, that's, fucking, it. that's yeah. the end of our relationship. <laughs> this fucking thing. But uh, yeah, I mean, his uh, his crew was really nice. Uh, everybody there was uh, super professional. They have this amazing light setup. Yeah. That like that huge softbox. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I asked them like six hundred Kelvin soft. Box, yeah, yeah. And I, have it. I was like, how much? How much did that cost? They're like, oh, 50 grand. But if you were to make it now, it'd be probably be more like a hundred. Like, oh, okay, yeah, that's good. But um, like, whoa. hey man, you it's, know, they, it makes it makes everything look yeah. fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And it was when he had a cable show, they bought that. Yeah. So somebody, you know, somebody paid for that that wasn't him. Yeah, right. You know, but uh, it must, it's yeah. it's good. Like he he's figured certain things out mm -hmm. that are oh, yeah. just little tidbits of goodness. Like you know, he never records a special. That way he can use his material forever. Yeah. You know, if you do a special, you got to retire that material and start over. Right, right. That's why if you see him do a set now, you're like, 
that joke is a little. Well, maybe you should have retired. <laughs> Obama is not president. <laughs> yeah, anymore. yeah, yeah. I saw him do a What's set. What's the deal with rotary phones? Yeah, dude, I saw him do a set at the Audrain. You know, at the Audrain Concours, like the benefit. Mm -hmm. And may, I'll tell you what, these boomers were fucking eating it up like crazy. They were having it. Mm -hmm. But some of the jokes, I was like, oh, Jay, it's, it's time to let this one go. You well, know? know your audience, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. He he, he did know the audience, but it was... Uh, the yeah. thing... Oh, the, look at that. Yeah, there's the photo of the softbox. Yeah. yeah. That's a big one. Yeah. That's a fucking beast of a softbox. What, what surprised me most is like, all right, well, this guy's... He's 73 now. And... Uh, you know, this is a car that you you need your wits about you if you're going to, you know, like floor it. Um, but he's like he's so sharp when yeah. he drives. Like he's a he's a really capable driver. And like I'm not talking about like in race car terms, Dude, but like steam a, car. Yeah. You think this is hard to do? You think a 675 <laughs> with a fucking tune on it with is hard to, control, yeah. hard to drive compared to something that will light your face on fire if you look at it wrong? Well, so, I mean, you have to you have to anticipate different things in different what's cars. What's the oldest right? car you ever drove? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, it's not going to be... I mean, like, is it probably not, in the 20s? No, oh, 70s. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude, you want to yeah. learn how to fucking focus on driving? <laughs> Try some shit from the 20s where the yeah. fucking gas pedal's in the middle and the brake is on the right yeah. and the clutch is on the other side of the car. And the timing's and on the thing. The shifter's outside the bodywork. <laughs> that's That'll fucking Shovel keep, the coal, but not too fast. <laughs> that'll keep you from the butt. Yeah. 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 Where if you go 27 miles an hour, you are closer to death than you are at 200 in this McLaren. Yeah. Zach and I almost died at 26 miles an hour. Wow. In a fucking 1902 Packard. That'll oh, fucking, boy. that'll put some hair on your nuts. <laughs> <laughs> the steering wheel was like, you had to steer while it's like fucking vibrating like a motel room bed. This shit is crazy. The floor was shaking. Yeah. The wooden oh, floor. The wooden, the wooden boards that make up the floor. Oh yeah. my goodness. Shady, dude. Yeah, so, uh, well, I, I haven't done that. So. I recommend it. Yeah. You should do a fucking build of like a pre, like pre a old, car. old shit. So here's here's the thing. I would love to do that. I know the audience Who the hell would watch it? <laughs> the audience Nobody. doesn't yeah, know the, there's, yeah. there's no, you know. Yeah. We almost died and the audience didn't watch it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. I say you should do that. Meanwhile, that video we made of that particular experience was like one of our lowest viewed videos of all time. It would be wow. great for like people like us, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah. oh my God, that's crazy. But like most people, like, why are they, why do they, yeah, get, why, why don't they just get a You should do it car. for fun. Like, you know, not as a work thing. Just go to one of these 19... 10 to 1930 like car events mm -hmm. and just it, it, I thought it was really fun to see the evolution of cars and like where the pedals used to be placed and where yeah. were they placed in the middle and now they're over here now they're over there and it was just cool to see why how did changed. they stop using the tiller like, you know, <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, that was a good idea yeah it's coming back <laughs> yeah, the idea of doing something for fun is really interesting. Yeah, I, 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 gotta, I, gotta, I gotta try that. That's, uh, that's, that's fair. That's, doing that's a car thing for fun. Concept. Yeah, it's a novel concept. Yeah. I should try that. Right, I, I don't know when I could right, pencil that right, in, but you know. Right, right. Um, but yeah. yeah. What do, what do, what do the numbers say that the audience wants? Just modified supercars? That's uh, all the audience wants? Uh, McLaren P1 rebuilds. Uh, oh, for, for me, yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh, I mean, each episode is getting two and a half million views. Oh. And it's just been like... It's crazy because I went to Jay Leno's garage and he was like, uh, "You're on episode seven, right? When's the next one coming out?" I'm like, D "Dude, this is not how it works. Like, <laughs> yeah, let me yeah. let me tell you." <laughs> yeah, like, the, yeah the he fact, was a big fan. Yeah, yeah he, like, he knew, knew every he like knew everything about it. He was asking detailed questions about your build and yeah. It's weird when people like you found out like that one of those two and a half million views is Leno. It's yeah, like, it's a weird thing. Yeah. yeah, now it's gonna be in my head. When so I met good. Seinfeld and he was like. Tell me about that blue notebook you're carrying around in all your videos. I'm like, okay, this is now weird. <laughs> <laughs> strange. Um, it's like, I watched you on TV when I was a kid. This is this is odd. So do you think, is it is it because the car is, exp if it wasn't like the one from the hurricane photo, mm -hmm. if you just bought a busted up P1, no. it's, because, it's because it starts with, some hype meme kind of thing, the th one that's sitting on the toilet, and you then are able to ride that wave. I think it's like 30 70. So it's probably 30 percent uh, the fact that it's a two million dollar hypercar or whatever, 70 percent because everyone saw that car die in the hurricane, right? Because that's the car they're like, Oh my god, I yeah. can't believe somebody you know would leave their car outside and wait till the hurricane. Blah, I don't blah. think it was I, no, I know, I know, but garage, know, but yeah. like, didn't no. it get taken? Yeah, outside? it got yeah, taken in his out, garage, yeah, it got yeah. taken out of the garage, yeah, yeah. yeah. But a yeah. lot of people was like, Why, you know, why would you leave it outside? I yeah. wouldn't, you know, if she was my girlfriend, all the experts, you know? 
Yeah. The issue is my. Did you see that one about my NSX? Yeah, yeah, oh. and, uh, yeah. I reposted it. That like, poor it, guy. It's it's that well. just the the poor, the poor guy to have that brain process. Anyway, go. Yeah, on. but uh, yeah. but the, the the whole thing is like um, I uh, my whole thing is um, relatability has nothing to do with net worth. So um, like Jay Leno is relatable, but he's rich. He's super rich, but he's relatable because, you know, he gets the same excitement out of like a $5,000 car as he would a $5 million car. You know, he, he sees like there's there's a weird, like uh, almost childlike novelty when he looks at things. And, you know, he has a he has a car guy's brain. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think if you bring that to like me, if I work on a car like it's I could be working on my first car, you know, a Nissan Maxima or a McLaren P1. It'll be the same process, you know, and people can be like, all right, well, I relate to that because I want to see what I would do if I, you know, got this piece of crap P1 and I was taking it apart. So I think like with that, um, it's very important to have like a good storyline that encompasses like a lot of relatability. If I was just like, well, I got a P1 and I took it to McLaren and McLaren is going to blacklist me and blah, blah, blah. Like, I I don't think it would have done very well. Right. But the fact that I'm like ripping apart the dash, you know, with, with my bare hands. But can you... But you can't go back, though. Yeah, you can. Absolutely, you can. You can? Yeah. You can go back to the Maxima and the audience will follow? It depends on the... So it all depends on the story. So I have uh, in uh, in in my plans, uh, I do have something after the P1. But uh, I don't know how it's going to do, but it's like it's going to be a lateral move. So a lot of people, especially YouTubers, they go, how do I top this? So like after a P1, do I just get a Koenigsegg? Do I get a fucking space shuttle? Like, you know, yeah. like what, what, what do I do? Um, but you have to do lateral moves. You have to do something that shows that you have a challenge in front of you. And uh, if you have that challenge, people will tune in for that. Because I just, I you know, I see your, you and, and, and others, it seems on the outside, other than like the, the, the repimping of the rides at Christmas time, like that, <laughs> that was actually very funny. And I'm not surprised it was successful, but, but like, let me repimp the pimped ride is actually yeah. pretty funny. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it's it has escalated. Mm-hmm. You know, it used Absolutely. to be shitty Japanese cars you were fixing mm-hmm. and now it's exotics and yeah. stuff like that. And I don't know how do you top the fucking P1, but if the if if you can find a way to not have to top it, yeah, that seems like a win. I think any time you have a uh, challenge that seems insurmountable, like when you see this car that was in uh, you know a hurricane that was a salt water, it was completely underwater, and there's people are like, there's no way that car is going to get rebuilt. Like right. that, that just. It's never going to happen. And then you're like, you know what? I think I can make it happen. So people are going to stick around because they want to see you either fail or, you know, uh, live vicariously through your successes. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, an interesting thing happens when, you know, whenever you do uh, something like this is you meet people like Arnie and, uh, you know, you can actually get things done. Um, so that's why, like, my next project is going to be something where, you know, the car is like, it's not even a car. It's it's basically, it's just like a husk of, like, a Did you a buy shell. that shitty underwater NSX? No, I wanted to. That that looked, it looked like a pile of rust. And I don't cool. actually think that's fixable. So I, I, so they got that car about a month after I got my uh, P1. And I call it's a uh, I think it's oh, Helix. Yeah, like I don't yeah, think, I, I don't that. think this particular NSX yeah, is it's fixable. not a good candidate. <laughs> no, no, but it, it would tell a good story. Uh, and for eighty five hundred dollars, I think that would be a really good YouTube video mm-hmm. just to see what what you actually could do. This could be yard art for somebody. Yeah. You know? and but, that was actually just the point. Now it's like I don't think you could fix that. And then you make videos trying to, and the audience yeah. goes, "Oh, can you fix it?" And maybe you but can. If you, maybe you but can. If you, yeah. I mean, you'd I mean, need a yeah. part. You'd need a parts car. Mm-hmm. Um, so, right, but like, you just the what parts what, car are you going to get that's the, worse than this? <laughs> this is the parts car. <laughs> yeah, like, like, that's a rat rod shell. That's like what that you, is. Yeah, yeah. You'd cut the VIN plate out of this and put it in another car, and you'd go, "I fixed it." Like, if you didn't have a YouTube channel, that's what you would do. Yes, but yeah. um, the the thing with this is, I tried to buy this car. Um, but then I started talking to the uh, the YouTube channel that does it, uh, that, that is actually um, restoring this. They're like a really good NSX shop. And they're like, yeah, we're going to restore it. And I, I get frustrated when I see projects like this. And like, I don't I don't talk any crap about any YouTubers or anything like that. But I really think the people that are that are doing this are doing themselves a disservice with their uh, thumbnails and titles. I mean, this could be like. You can have a million views per video on this. This is like a really intriguing thing, but they're they're really not 
not capitalizing on the purchase that they made. So um, I, I wish them luck on this. I know that they know their stuff about NSXs. I don't even, are they aluminum frame? Yeah. Okay. So aluminum, like this was, this is fresh water, but it was there for 10 years. I mean, just, you just, you can look at that and just go, that's not actually fixable. I mean. It, I mean, there, there's there's parts of it that is. Yeah. I, I, I mean, the, the steel stuff is probably not great because um, it does have steel subframes. Probably. Yeah. Um, but I think uh, most of the car is aluminum, which was yeah, sort of the thing. That about was the, those yeah. cars. why it's so light. Yeah, that was yeah. their thing. So aluminum would probably be okay if it's not subject to salt water. Um, so a lot of that could be fixed if you took it down, you know, the sandblast or dry ice the hell out of it, and then uh, got new panels. And I mean, it would cost. But at a you, certain point, it's not the same. It's just not the same car. Well, it's a ship of Theseus thing, you know. Like if I replace yeah. all uh, every component on my P1, is it still the same car? It's like, well, I, yeah, but like, uh, I, true. Mm-hmm. If you if you get a whole new body from Lanzante or whoever the fuck on right. your P1, it's 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 kind of not the same car. Yeah, yeah. But this one seems like you would have to replace. Mm-hmm. Everything. I mean, yeah. if you're at the, with the P1, like, if I, I don't the know. The carbon tubs are the same. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I don't make the rule of when it becomes different. Yeah. But it just, at a certain point, mm-hmm. the, the, if the percentage of components that you're replacing are is like 95%, <laughs> yeah. you're not left with the same car. You're just not. Yeah. Um, I, I think. Uh, uh, Adam Carolla made a made a good point on this because he um, you know he bought and sold like race cars you know yeah. old old like Porsches, and he was like as long as nobody else claims to have that car, then you're probably okay because like in in a race car everything gets replaced you know you smash it up it'll it'll get yeah. replaced you know engines everything so like what is actually a ri- when you have an original race car it's like it's not original it's like it's, it's been I know and that's yeah. why a lot that a that's why it's very very difficult. To buy and sell race cars, yes. and I wouldn't want you know our friend, our friend uh, Pete Brotman is, was involved in uh, this massive race car sale that just happened on Bring a Trailer. All those Porsche race cars, there was like twelve of them, and he was like, "Dude, I never want to sell a fucking race car again." He's like, "Because <laughs> I've done." He knows everything about classic street cars. Mm-hmm. He knows what a good one is, what a bad one is, what a real one is, what a fake one is, what a blah, 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 over restored, under restored, never restored. Blah, blah. He could fucking tell you in two seconds. Within five thousand bucks, what a seventy-year-old classic is worth. Yeah, he goes. I have been researching. I had lunch with him the other day. He goes. I've been researching these race cars for six goddamn months. They're they're online. They're getting bids. He goes, and I couldn't tell you within two hundred thousand dollars either way what <laughs> oh, wow. any of these fucking things are worth. Yeah, no idea. Yeah, and 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 those are in in many cases. Not cars that have been crashed. Yeah, they're cars that are that are documented original. Like you start talking about GTOs, you start talking about shit from the '60s that was like fucking hit an oak tree at the Mulsanne <laughs> Strait in 1966. Yeah, and there's nothing left, and now it looks like a complete car. Like yeah, so like yeah, who even knows? And like three pieces of aluminum are the same, mm-hmm. and so yes, Jochen Moss did drive <laughs> this plate, and you know. Well, I think with his NSX, it's like P1 is super rare yeah like nsx i mean it's a cool car yeah but like but that's like an early car it's like a 91 they made yeah. a lot yeah, yeah. right yeah. exactly it's yeah. like it's it's not i, th- I think i didn't know the people who did it are own an nsx shop and that's yeah. what they do and so okay as promotion for we I, can make the worst possible <laughs> candidate yeah, you I guess know, it's I think they've been really taking that to shows, like on a yeah, trailer. Okay. So people can see it and be like, sure. oh my God, this is yeah, crazy. Yeah, so for an $8,500 sculpture. Yeah. All right. It's it's not yeah. bad. I yeah. think, you know, if I were to buy this, uh, and I offered them because I heard, I heard it was 8500 I'm like, I'll give you ten grand right now. Yeah. You know? But um, if I were to buy that, I, like... It doesn't matter if the car is not the same car at the end. The the fact that you're documenting every single piece of it, it will be the same car in people's minds. You know, like you could. I, I don't think you'd replace the frame or anything. Maybe parts of it or or whatever, but it's still going to be the same. You know, frame and same VIN number. So after that, then you build up what yeah. is what looks like a car. Yeah. Yeah, it, I guess. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, I'm I'm not trying to be a shithead about it. I just feel like. Oh no, you know. I, I just mean, feel like you're just at that point. You're just not let let the fuck. You're not left with the car. Well, he, like the, there's the. Yeah. Do you know? Have you ever been to um? Oh, what's the place in Oxnard? Black Hawk Collection is that the one in Oxnard? Oh, uh, uh, Black it, uh, Black Hawk. I think it's Black Hawk Collection. The museum in Oxnard 
the guy, have you ever been out there? Yeah. No. It's like an hour from here. The guy has one of the biggest collections of pre-war French cars you've ever seen. And the, for, from 1930 to 1940, the French must have been on the best drugs because their cars are fucking nuts. They're all <laughs> Art Deco. And, is that uh -huh. what it is? Blackhawk? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, that's nice. And they've got, I think it's called like the Bugatti in the Lake or yes. something like that. Yes. And it's a whole museum diorama. Uh -huh. This Bugatti, you know, type 53 or whatever, type 50 something, mm -hmm. was sunk in a lake for 30 years. They fucking, you know, lift bagged that shit out. Mm -hmm. And it's just displayed as, yeah. as it was and that's a that's a neat thing uh zach look up bugatti of from the lake or something like that yeah um but uh we actually saw uh funny to say bugatti in the lake uh oh, the, we the veyron yeah so we went we were in vegas yeah. uh we stopped over in vegas and uh we stopped at um uh royalty exotics with uh, houston crosta uh -huh. and he bought the bugatti that went into the uh -huh. the galveston bay and is he it fixed uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it needed a few things, but it's uh, almost there. Yeah, but it, he wanted to have it out for Car Week. But it, it, I mean, my, yeah, my guys, there it is, Bugatti yeah. Type Twenty Two Brescia. So it's just on display. Yeah, it's so basically cool. Basically, the same state as that NSX. It's so pretty, cool. pretty much. Yeah, it's a beautiful display, and it's really worth seeing. But it's uh, it's like this. I, I think the reason why people like that is because of the story. Yeah, and the story is like they uh, did they like hide it from the Nazis or something like that or like. Uh, uh, accidentally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Or like they put it in a bag and the bag ripped and like, oh, shit. I heard the lady saw a pelican. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, what is that? It was used to belong used to, belong to oh, because it was Rene Dreyfus's car mm -hmm. who lost it in a drunken poker game to Swiss playboy Aldebert Baudet in 1934. Mm -hmm. uh, he was oh. unable to pay the taxes at the Swiss border. It's always a tax thing, isn't left, it? <laughs> they left. Well, he abandoned the car at the border, leaving Swiss officials to dispose of his prize. And uh, a 10-year-old Bugatti wasn't of significant value, so they rolled it into the lake. <laughs> this was like <laughs> the Montana fucking, plates that's of... That's fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. So that's like, that's yeah, a, we don't, and that's a crazy story. Fuck, yeah. That's a power move. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. a power move right there. Yeah, the Swiss, have, they don't give a fuck. The no. Swiss, dude. They're like, oh, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, a ten-year-old Bugatti wasn't worth <laughs> keeping as a car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Switzerland's a whole on a whole other level. I mean, we were there on adventure drives in yeah. 2017, and yeah. man, remember when they made the a few of them made the U-turn in the in the tunnel? Yeah. Oh, I mean, it was like an all points bulletin. There were like they hunted us down. That was That's... my my first ever real experience with the effects of Big Brother. Oh, Switzerland yeah. is nuts. Yeah, someone made a U-turn in a tunnel, mm -hmm. which don't do that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah we're not endorsing U-turns. No. That, that was a bad decision, and yes. you could probably could have guessed how it would have gone. Yeah, but they they didn't get pulled over. The Swiss officials showed up at the hotel. But that having, was like 50 miles away. It was far. It was far. Had they followed our progress on cameras across the country. Oh my goodness! And waited till we got to the hotel and caught us there. Yeah, that's so, where I was like. No, so it was three of them, and it was a total of uh, ten thousand dollar fines. But it doesn't end there because the next day they were following us again on the cameras. Yeah, and uh, me and Freddie were coming out of this tunnel, and all of a sudden there's a police blockade. They pulled over twelve of us, and they were, but they didn't give anyone tickets other than the the people that made the U-turn. Uh -huh. Like, oh, we have you on camera speeding. So they gave them all speeding gave tickets. More tickets. More yeah. tickets. Oh, my God. It was real punitive. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it, it, it seemed like we got to get these assholes. On that same trip, I got the biggest speeding ticket I've ever gotten in my life oh, yeah? separately mm -hmm. and mailed it to me later. But it was a 1,000 euro for nine miles an hour over the limit. So off the record does not work. Uh... Switzerland? <laughs> 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 Switzerland. Yeah. I, was, yeah. uh, I was there uh, about a month ago uh, in Switzerland. I fuck it. Despite what we just discussed it's it is fantastic. one of my favorite places on the planet oh, the it, place does, it doesn't even look Swiss. real no like you, you 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 get out and you look at this it's like, it, looks it looks like photoshopped yeah. <laughs> yeah it does it does <laughs> not yeah. is photoshopped it looks yeah. fake as hell i've been to a couple <laughs> places that look fake as hell remember with Tha the thailand uh the the those uh hongs oh yeah that was that was uh that looked like how to train your dragon yeah, yeah. the it water in tahiti yeah the water the water in thailand the water in tahiti yeah and then the mountains in switzerland doesn't look real yeah i, I went to uh L lauterbrunnen oh, um, cool. and then we went to the the top of uh, top of europe the uh, sphinx observatory yeah and uh, you just take this train like about an hour and it goes right up to the top of a mountain and it's like it's it's the most insane thing yeah. ever switzerland rules yeah and despite the speeding of enforcement up on the mountains there really isn't any speeding enforcement Right, some of the best driving on the planet. Yeah, I would, I would like 
actually live there. Like for I, sure, I would yeah, live there. Yeah, I would. I would love to have yeah. a house. Like the houses are expensive, but they're not like out like outrageously no, expensive. No, yeah, yeah. And they're big. They got yeah. big houses over there. They're they're fucking. You ever been in like a really dope Swiss chalet? Oh yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, we stayed in one. Yeah. So Cool. Yeah, AC is not really a thing though. But like, <laughs> yeah, but they don't—they don't really need it. Yeah, they did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they could, you know. <laughs> yeah, we were just in—I uh, was just in Germany, and and, mm-hmm. we, and we were in England, staying in the quote nice hotel. Yeah, the, no AC. So the, yeah, the one no thing I've, I've learned about UK, I, I mean Europe in general, is like hospitality is real hit or miss. Yeah, like <laughs> it's hit if you spend like staggering amounts of money. That hotel <laughs> from Adventure Drives in Lucerne. At the top of the mountain, oh, it was yeah. Hotel Bergenstock, mm-hmm. and it was fucking epic. Yeah, epic. But like every other hotel is like. Mm-hmm. But then, when, remember in the Italian Riviera? Like, oh, that, that like that, that was like terrible. Little, yeah, it was not a good <laughs> hotel. Although I liked uh, what was the name of that town? Um, shit. Well, it was Italian Riviera. Whatever, it was great. But um, I can't remember the name of that town. That's gonna drive me nuts now. It's well, two words. Everyone should yeah. go to Santo Europe. Santo something or... Yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. know. It was all Just blur. go to Europe, have some fun. Go drive in Europe. Yeah. Oh, that was fantastic. Nice. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty crazy going from... Because uh, I took a, a trip. Uh, we got a Mini Cooper S on rental uh, from Paris to uh, to Venice via Switzerland. And uh, so... That must have been a nice drive. It, it was. It was. Um, and uh, uh, Switzerland was fantastic. And then you get to Italy. And holy crap, Italy is like the Florida of Europe. Yeah. It's, like, <laughs> it's shaped kind of the same. It's shaped too. exactly. Yeah. yeah. One, one's a dick, one's a boot. Yeah. yeah. And like, it's, it, dude, I mean, they are, the lanes don't matter. Yeah, they don't give a fuck over there. Italy has uh, has these things, um, just like the UK, they have average speed cameras. Yeah. They don't work. Yeah. And they're also, it takes 35 minutes to get through them. Yeah, yeah. So, and there's traffic in the middle. And it's at 130 kilometers an hour, which is like 81 miles an hour or something. So, so you can go 130, hit traffic, and I'm like, you could be doing 150 on on the back end of the yeah. miles an hour, yeah. you know, and it won't matter. It and everybody adjust, does it. It's not variable. Stuff. No, <laughs> no, it doesn't. It, yeah. it doesn't track. So like that's why uh, I, when I was in Germany doing Spider RS, um, the the Porsche executives Andy Preuninger who runs the GT program, and they said this the new 911 ST, which is this carbon bodied you know mm-hmm. crazy thing they're doing. Zach's actually going on the launch. Ooh. They said it's going to be in southern Italy, and I was like, oh, why did you pick there? He goes, no rules. Yeah, it's no, <laughs> that's goes, like Outback. No goes, rules, no, just right. You know, nobody cares. <laughs> nobody cares down there. Do anything you want. Yeah, <laughs> there there really is no rules. There. Yeah. Um. Yeah. What do you guys think about the ST? Looks great. Yeah. I have um I, I got a, a 992 GT3 yeah. the manual one that yeah. uh, Matt Armstrong rebuilt. Yeah. That thing I thought You texted me when you got that. You're like I think I get this now. Yeah. <laughs> like so I thought like oh it's a 6 cylinder. It's not going to have much torque or whatever. That thing fucks. I yeah, mean it that rips. it's so good. It's the best manual car I've ever driven. Yeah, yeah. It's There's like, a reason those people buy those fucking things. I know. And, and they they they're overachievers, right? Like mm-hmm. you look at the stats and you're like naturally aspirated 6 like 500 horsepower like yeah. why is this as fast as it is, like mm-hmm. it really shouldn't. Yeah. The math says this shouldn't be this fast. It beat are. a 700 horsepower C63 on a runway. Yeah. Like we, we we put it up against all these cars. Like it just sp- like spanked yeah. all of them. Yeah. The reason why Porsche is, horsepower is different. Yeah. It is, uh, but also the 9,000 RPM rev limit. Like it, the gearing makes it like it's in the power band all the time. Yeah. Like it just lives there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That thing is, is it Ruby Star? Uh, oh, is it ultraviolet? Uh, ultraviolet? Ultraviolet. 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 Yeah. yeah. Great color. It's a. It's a. It's a paint to sample. <laughs> if you want, uh, if you want a little more power, there's a demand kit for that. If you want to go with a four five. You know, I. Uh, I drove it. We we can talk after. It the is. Show. Uh, uh, it is good. Yeah. Well, yeah. you have a demand. My uh, car is yeah. bananas. Yeah. And if you put that the demand the four point five in the GT three, mm-hmm. you get more. Yeah. More power. Actually, a little less torque than okay. me. Not not from stock than, yeah. than what I have. Mm-hmm. I have I have 570 horsepower, 450 torque. Okay. The demand GT3 is 591 horsepower mm-hmm. and 430 torque. Okay. So you actually you you pick up power at the top, you yeah. lose a little torque at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like a plus you know 85, 90 plus 90. That's that's insane. Oh, it it rips. But the the difference mm-hmm. you know from what I from my stock engine to the four five that's, versus that's the GT three to to the four five. Yeah. It's a smaller change mm-hmm. for the same amount of money. Yeah. Or possibly more. 
Well, but it's uh, still excellent. you want to get into you know I th- I think you should get into Porsches. Yeah, you know. Do you only do McLarens? Well, I mean, mostly McLarens. But we have done, uh, of all things, we've done four GT2 RS builds. Hmm. You know, that's kind of a rare car. You know, I've done more of those. I think I've done like two Turbo S's and four GT2 RS's. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. They uh, the the GT2 RS customer is okay with modifying. You know? Yeah, oh, and, yeah, and that's the other thing too. It's like it's a car like you really don't need to modify. But no, how I found four fast. of them, yeah. But they're man, I tell you, I love German engineering because these cars like you just we do um, downpipes, intercooler, tune, and make seven twenty to seven forty wheel. Uh, it's on the d- dyno for like an hour, yeah. and then you don't see the car again until it needs to be serviced. Yeah, like I mean, it's just it's never a problem. Yeah, it's not like British engineering. Well, because if you take <laughs> what Porsche does and you just kick the priority you know because Porsche even in the in the even in the GT cars they still have to pass noise limits in Germany or where wherever they're sold they still have to pass emissions they still have to pass you know whatever measure of refinement they, they they deem appropriate for their customer and if you just like move that priority shift into loud and gnarly mm-hmm. the reliability is still fine like everything the componentry can still take it yeah it's just like can your eardrums take it like, right you know, yes that kind of thing. exactly yeah. Yeah. my yeah. gt3 is uh, is straight piped um is it oh, it's, geez. Uh, does it give you headaches no no I, I drove it for five hours um it was fine like 85 miles an hour is good 91 little droney oh, really? um but uh I'm, it at 9,000 rpm it's just the best sounding porsche yeah, yeah. ever They're like it's just good. so good yeah you got to get it's it it takes a lot of speed to go 9000 rpm though um i mean first and second well, you live not in florida never mind yeah yeah i mean all we got all we got is roads like yeah. we can i i can do 130 miles an hour on the way to my shop like yeah. it's it's fine but um it's uh it's it's a thing I, anybody that hasn't driven a gt3 like of any year really uh but the new ones especially they they're so so good yeah they're rad yeah they're rad and they and Florida roads are wide enough that you don't notice how fucking big they are. Yeah, they're they're, they're fairly big. Uh, I actually drove um, Matt Mormon's uh, 997 uh, RS GT3 uh-huh. RS, and that revved out to like 8500. We drove it on the on the runway, and it just felt it. You know, it didn't feel as refined as the 992, mm-hmm. uh, but it still you know it felt like it had a lot of shove, it had a lot of grunt, and it sounded great. Uh, but those things are. Three hundred thousand dollars? Yeah, they're expensive now. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Well, once there's a fixed number of something, you know, once they stop making it, and we know how many there are. Plus, they they're making more cars now than they were then. Chrysler Pacifica. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's yep. that's the move. That's yeah. the move. Yeah, yeah. 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 Get the you limited the cro- because they're only you limited. The crossover. They're 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 limited to so uh, to a hundred thousand units. As that many year. as they can sell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as, as many. <laughs> that's the only limit. They don't just sell it to anybody. About minivans or that crossover. The, the minivan. Thing. Okay. Yeah, they, they stopped Did making. Did you ever mini- finish that Hellcat swap? And uh, we're still we're still in the process of that. Okay. So yeah. The rendering looked cool, but yeah, I don't think I ever saw a finished. Yeah, I got the engine. I had a twelve hundred horsepower Hellcat engine, and then we got the minivan. We just need to mate the two. Turns out, just real quick. Yeah, just real just real quick. Hey. Uh, what are you doing next week? <laughs> <laughs> Here we Let's go. Make it mid-engine, maybe. Yeah, there's yeah. more room back there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it would be if you could do that. that would be well, no, you could uh, do we're... like the Ford Supervan, you know, like oh like, yeah, like or the Renault Espace F1. Oh, that yeah. would be the move. Well, I mean, we're gonna make it so it looks like you know Dodge had it did from their it. factory. Yeah, Dodge did it. You know, um, the the interesting thing about that is uh, it, there's actually four inches of clearance underneath the seats because you have the stow and go. Mm-hmm. So if you get rid of that, oh yeah, then you have that, a then shaft. you actually have room for a drive shaft oh, exhaust. So you can all make that. it look yeah pretty uh, stock. Yeah, the the oh, engine bay is old, actually yeah. really big. Like you can you can fit a Hellcat in there. Like we've done the measurements. <laughs> 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 so you know it's just putting it together. I'm gonna take the. Uh, I would rather have a Hellcat powered Pacifica than any other Chrysler product. I yeah. mean, I'm talking about me. Yeah. I don't think they should build that for everybody else. Oh, but no, like, no. if you give me the option of any Chrysler vehicle to put a Hellcat in, mm-hmm. a Pacifica is the most desirable end product. A- absolutely, it would be the most practical, and it's uh, it's also the most like, it's also the most silly. I mean, why would you ever need? No, the you know, Wrangler is the most silly. It, have you yeah. driven that Wrangler 392? Uh, not the 392, but there is I, no dumber vehicle <laughs> in the fucking history of cars. So, <laughs> a long time ago on the on the uh, that Eastern, thing wants to eat itself. 
<laughs> yeah, the the Easter Jeep Safari like a long time ago. Uh, they had the Hellcat, oh, yeah. uh, that green one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I called it, it a sick. penis pump on Jalopnik yeah. or whatever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, like, so couldn't we went, you? Weren't you not allowed to use more than like a quarter throttle yes. because it would break itself? Yeah, because they had a Dodge <laughs> Dakota transmission. They're like, do not floor this car; it will explode. So <laughs> they were like very like don't. It was the semiest of builds. Oh, yes. absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's very very. But it actually semi. ran though. Uh, it did. It, it did. did. I mean, they, yeah, they, did. they got it to rock crawl and stuff like that, but they were like, don't. And you could floor. probably, I mean, if you changed, like, you know, the hood or whatever, you could probably put a Hellcat set up in the, in the, what they've got now that's got the seven, the 392. Yeah. Right. You could probably do that. It wouldn't be good. Right. Like, yeah. it's just, it would be a mess. But, right. like, when you brake torqued the 392, you can actually feel the thing <laughs> twisting. It was, it was like a car from the 60s. Yeah. Actually, I'll tell you what. That looks good. They yeah. they make that they make good looking good, good looking stuff. It's yeah. like if you turned a Wrangler into a UTV, <laughs> you yeah. turned into a Razor. No, it's 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 super cool. Like Dodge yeah. makes good stuff. I mean, they have they're doing roadkill nights now. Um, but uh, one of my dailies is uh, a twenty one ch- uh, Charger uh, Hellcat Red Eye. You know, and I, I love yeah. that thing, but it it cost me like two thousand dollars a year in tires. You know, because <laughs> yeah. it just goes through tires. But like, it's it's a it's a great car. Mm-hmm. I let everybody borrow it because it's the the dumbest thing in the world. So fun. Yeah. Yeah. Like here, just have like, you seen some of those like ones that have been flipped at like Barrett Jackson and Meekum for like enormous money? Oh, God, the last call ones yeah. and whatever. <laughs> and then Dodge was like, "No, this is the last one." Though. Last call. Yeah. yeah. No, no. Let's for real. let's make one that's like an ode to Dewey's. Yeah. Okay, last the last call edition. We've got like the date rape edition, the last call, <laughs> the January. I jo- I made a joke that there was a January sixth edition oh, one the other day, and a fan sent me a fucking screenshot. Mm-hmm. There is a Hellcat in New York City. City with the custom plate January 6th oh, Jesus on it. <laughs> he, he ran the fucking tag. I mean, know your audience, you know? Like, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> January 6th yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, Dodge is making, they're, they're trying to run out of all of their uh, stock as, as quickly it. as possible they because they're like, we're not making more, like a, a newer version of this. So what do we do to make this more appealing? Like, we'll put stickers on it. Yeah. So. And, and then we'll put red stickers on it. This guys. one has ten more horsepower. Yeah, this is the one you want. They uh, they just uh, I just saw a drag race video. I think it was Edmonds or some but some you know fairly vanilla outlet did a quarter mile drag race with one of the fucking last not the crazy not the one seventy not the one seventy not the super drag car but like the the fastest like street oriented version of this thing mm-hmm. and the Kia EV6 GT like smoked it in the oh, corner yeah. oh, no. they can't hook up for shit it's 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 terrible yeah. but if you want to do the selling points yeah, right? yeah. but if you want to yeah. do burnouts yeah. Yeah, yeah. like it's it so will do many my um my charger Bone stock, I have no modifications to it other than PS4S other, tires. Other than the fact that it's a complete powertrain swapped into a, <laughs> in, into a V6, into yeah. Into a rental yeah. car. Yeah, into a rental car at the repo, yeah. Um, other than that. Yeah, other than that small detail. Um, when I uh, ran out of tire uh, and we were going to replace the tires, I was like, okay, I'm going to burn these off. I got up to 152 mile an hour wheel speed on this thing, and it was- While uh, static? It, uh, yeah, yeah. So you, it's actually on my on my Instagram. If you go on my Instagram, you also a, burn br- the rear brake pads right through. No, no, it's a line lock. Oh, it's got a yeah, line yeah. lock. Line lock. So oh, yeah. you, you just stay there, and it, it'll, Is it'll it a factory keep, line lock. Factory oh, line yeah. lock. Oh, and wow. uh, if you take traction control off, yeah, go all the way down. Stop when you get to the smoke. There right right there, there, right there, right up there. Yeah, that's that's chalky. Yeah, that's 152 mile an hour. It, it will be when I start start moving. It's. Still going. I'm going. That's the, pretty chalky. That's yeah, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right there. That's a hundred, like 152. That's, well done. We're, that's at, very wow. we're at the top Fourth of fifth. Gear. Yeah. Top of fifth. Wow. <laughs> and that's a bone stock automobile that you can just. <laughs> yeah. They, they just sell, sell you. They just sell that to people. Yeah. Not crazy. No. That's. that's I think insane. what's crazy is the like the plaid. Tesla. You think yeah. you think about your handing this to somebody who, you know, we're car enthusiasts. Yeah, we're yeah. used to this kind of power, so we can handle it. But you, these, they're coming out of a Prius. Yeah, they're coming <laughs> out of a Prius, and look, I'm saving the environment, and you know, they're, mm-hmm. they're not like, a, 
you know, adjusted to this kind of power. Yeah. That's, Here in that's Los what scares Angeles, me. The people that I, I mean, you see, you see enthusiasts driving those cars, but you also see people. Right. I'm that not worried about no enthusiasts. business driving a thousand horsepower about, car. I am worried about them. I watched with a guy, half a steering uh, wheel. I watched yeah. a guy in a plaid God, make a, a right at a red light, and I watched his hand go to the bottom of the yoke, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and it, it made me so yeah, laugh yeah. so hard because he couldn't. He just didn't. You know, I he, can't do it. Everyone says yeah. like, no, no, you just keep your hands at ninety three. He's like, no, no, no. That guy wished he had a wheel. My friend got a rental plaid. Yeah. Uh, it, well, it's a loaner from Tesla because uh, he, he works with a guy that has uh, 23 Tesla Roadsters. And uh, they, were, they were in the shop and they gave him a, a, a plaid. But it can only go to 85. Yeah, he's he's like uh, cornering he's a, the market. He's a, yeah, he's a collector. Yeah. So um, he's he, going to be a market maker. Not one of them works. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a, a bunch loan. of them are brick. You a a bunch of them are brick. Really? Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, they're, they were cheap, but now they're getting expensive. Um, but uh, that plaid, they limited it to 85 miles an hour. They gave him the valet key. <laughs> <laughs> but but it would still go into, like, you know, plaid, cheetah mode or it whatever. It would do, like, zero to 85 in yes, two in, seconds. Yes, in no, yeah. yeah. And then just hit yeah, a wall. Yeah, oh. yeah. So, so all we did is, like, my, my friend has a Talk runway, so we, we just went, we were like, we're going to go to the runway. We're just going to do this. It took like 10 minutes for the batteries to, to warm up. Yeah. And then we're just st- sitting there. It's like, all right, it's going to be good. It's going to yeah. be good. It's going to be real good. And it's me and my uh, my two friends. And we just kept doing launches. When you hit 85. So you get your head gets sucked into the back. Yeah. And, and then, then your just, head goes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just it hits a wall. Yeah. That's like, crazy. Um, but uh but afterwards, like I, I felt fine. How interesting fine. that they'd put the speed limiter there, but not lock out that mode. No, no, it, it was funky. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it had drag strip mode. It was Slight weird. oversight. So yeah. Funky. So we were we were doing that, <laughs> and like we we probably did 10, 15 launches, um, and we felt fine. And then afterwards, we're driving home, like. I think I want to be sick. Yeah. Like, it's like, it was physically, yeah. like, I was like, oh my God. Ever, I, anytime I've ever filmed a really fast EV and I've had to do three or four launches in a row for camera, mm-hmm. I it, I have a lingering yeah. unease that stays with me for like an hour. Yeah. It's like, it's like one or two hours later, we were all like, I got to sit down. Who <laughs> was just talking about that on the show? Harris. Oh yeah. Chris Harris. Mm-hmm. Harris was like, he said after filming the Ramats. The Nevera. Oh, God. He was like, I had to stop my my. He gets he gets driven to and from Top Gear sets, which mm-hmm. um, on the one hand is quite posh, yeah. But on the other hand, as someone who has to drive himself to the middle of nowhere, like mm-hmm. one of the only things, like if I if I had a, a if I had one extra luxury in my life, mm-hmm. believe it or not, it would be a fucking driver. Yeah. To take like because that. Doesn't matter, but Harris said he had to ask his driver to fucking pull over so he could fucking throw up on the side of the road yeah. after that. We actually they're um, too fast, man. I mean, yeah. I, I think we could probably talk about it, but uh, the the people that were there before us for Jalen's garage were, was um, the Pininfarina people. Oh, uh, the Batista, the, the Batista, yeah. yeah. And that's uh, that's based on the under, underpinnings of the Ramats. Yeah, it's a Ramats yeah. with a hat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it looks really cool. Yeah, and they, they had some yeah. other concept cars there that that looked that looked awesome, but it's like nineteen hundred horsepower. Yeah, yeah. That's I so- drove the Nevera. It's ridiculous. It's yeah. completely ridiculous, and it's also, um, and I've said this a bunch, the the one thing that is, that the, the, the biggest difference between a Hellcat Red Eye or a GT3 and a Nevera is that the Hellcat, even when you're not going fast, you know you're in a Hellcat. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The way it idles, the way it sounds, yeah. the way it goes from zero to five miles an hour, goes, oh, you know? The, the the GT3, the way that engine f- f- vibrates and tingles and makes that very specific noise and the tightness of the powertrain, you don't have to be doing something stupid to appreciate it. Mm-hmm. The Nevera, if you're not going, if you're not running an eight-second quarter mile, yeah. you might as well be in a Model 3 or something. Okay. And it's built well and it looks good, but every EV, doesn't matter what it is, at 10% throttle feels exactly the fucking same. Mm-hmm. And so that's the problem with building these EV supercars and hypercars, and, and they, they chase these numbers, and the numbers are so impressive, but, like, the rest of the time... It's like mm-hmm. you're just it's a silent car and it rides well and it it handles well and it masks its weight well, but like unless you're being like fucking deeply deeply antisocial, yeah. you know, and doing something that like will get people killed, mm-hmm. um, or on a runway or whatever, then like it's just 
silly. I mean, you you have a lot of experience in like really high horsepower cars. You know, you've been in you know two thousand horsepower cars, but you know, you building cars um, in the future. Like, where do you think that's headed? Do you think do you think that this is you know a two thousand horsepower EV is the future? Man, I don't, as an enthusiast, it's hard to get behind this because, mm-hmm. yeah, like you said, the car is like soulless unless you're doing something just totally insane. Yeah. Like, I just I don't get it. You know, I I drove a Taycan turbo whatever and it's like it's super fast and like like I actually like physically giggled from like zero to 70 but then after that I'm like oh you know it's just it's just such a letdown I I don't I don't see it I think that you know the industry is I think we're we're in like the last hurrah like the last 25 years is like kind of like it was in the 60s and up to 71 or whatever Mm -hmm. for muscle cars it's been great but like I don't know where this is going. You know, it's like they're pushing the electric cars so hard. Yeah. They, I mean, I, I don't think gas cars will disappear entirely mm-hmm. in the next 20 or 30 years. I think they'll walk back. They've already, California's already walked back this 2035 ban thing. What? Yeah. <laughs> You're uh, telling me. <laughs> yeah, right. You're telling me they did. Some, they said some crazy shit to get headlines, and then walked it back when it was totally untenable. I don't believe that. Yeah, Matt. No. I don't. I don't believe that. Well, no, yeah, what it was like three, three days later, they were saying, "Don't charge your cars because of the power grid." Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and 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 so I mean, certainly, and Porsche has 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 said that they're going to at least build gas powered GT cars, you know, as long as they can. So mm-hmm. it. Uh, I hope they leave the sports car folks alone for a while. Yeah, I mean, that's that's my biggest thing. It's like, who are we really hurting? We're such a small yeah. group of people modifying cars. Like, mm-hmm. it, are we really the ones that, that are no, causing but it's the problems? Just, it's highly visible. You know, it's and that's it's a high profile thing. It's a, and, we're an easy target. Yeah, and 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 the the general culture of modifying cars, like someone who 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 makes more power in a in a McLaren or even in like a. A, a BMW or or whatever, you may not be affecting the fuel economy in regular driving. You know, right. you may not be. You might you you could still run cats and you can still run the full emissions controls and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. There's a subset of a subset that makes the cars dirtier. I mean, there's these diesel guys. Well, I think they're the ones that brought the heat. Yeah. Honestly, yeah, for you know, sure. Rolling coals, rolling well, coal. Someone, on one of those shops just got fined a crazy amount of money. Yeah, for selling like legitimate mm-hmm. emissions defeat devices. Right. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember who. Well, you have to adapt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and a lot of people are adapting, and mm-hmm. you know, we're, and we're still able to do things. You know. I'm interviewing um, the the president of McLaren of the Americas at Pebble Beach, and you know, one of the things I want to talk about is like, you know, everyone else is building crossovers and elect. Lotus is building an electric crossover. Yeah. Like, oh wow. What you know? What is McLaren going to do? Because we're you know, you guys right now are the the last company. Right. That Lambo and Ferrari are out. Aston's out. You're the last company that's only building sports cars. Mm-hmm. Like, nobody else. Yeah. Um, I don't um, think McLaren is going to be a company in ten years if they don't. I I, I honestly do not believe they're going to make it ten years if they don't have. You know, like a SUV if offering they do a carbon or whatever. tub crossover with the engine in the back. That would be <laughs> So I, I mean, I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I have a lot of complaints about McLaren. I, I do give them props on a, on a lot of stuff. I love their cars. I love the design. I love uh, the engineering. But like, man, like when when they first started doing the 12C and 650S, they didn't make anything like none of their parts they're they're all from third party suppliers mm-hmm. so engines were made by Ricardo Graziano gearbox um you know even the P1 it's like none of that shit was made like the the body was made by ProDrive um the uh, the tubs were made somewhere else and like at the McLaren factory they just like assembled all this stuff they just got like a lego kit and like they assembled it and like boom this is our car um now with the Artura they brought a lot of that shit in house yeah. and they're realizing that like this is hard because these cars aren't reliable and they're coming back with so many issues. The Artura is complicated. It's so complicated. Yeah. Yeah. Like in order to get it in reverse the 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 e-motor has to be engaged. It has a brand new transmission. It has this axial flux whatever gearbox that sounds like it's from back That's to the, the future. That's the e-motor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Same as the 296 uses. Yeah. It's actually the same motor. And it's it's Dude, it's so insane that, like, I can't imagine that an Artura, like a first-year Artura, is going to be more than $100,000 in, like, five, six years. I think that thing's going to plummet because nobody's going to be able to work on them. 
That's yeah, it. We'll see. It'll be interesting. It's too bad. Have you driven an Artura? No. I drove it. It's great. Okay. It's so fucking. I nice. ha- I have heard that they're so nice to drive. Every every beautiful. person that's driven one has said that they are beautiful to drive. Maybe not quite as good as a seven twenty, but way better than a five series car. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like way better. Yeah. And and I, in my opinion, way better than a Ferrari two nine six as well. Um, basically the same quarter mile number with yeah. 200 less horsepower mm-hmm. it's like 400 pounds lighter than a 296 right well mclaren's um, famous for always you know doing more yeah, yeah. performance with less with power less, yeah. but also the ui is very good and stuff like mm-hmm. that i don't i they may switch me into one i'm i'm going to pebble beach with mclaren next week so i'm driving a 765 lt up there mm-hmm. but they said they may switch me into an artura or, a, or a, some other thing in the middle of the week i don't fucking know can but. you ask them where, when, where i can get a p1 battery because uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's been real hard. <laughs> really? Oh yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. Let's talk about that for a minute. So you you when you were last here, mm-hmm. um, you bought this fucking thing. Well, yeah. Actually, and I think on on the last time I was on the show, I said I wouldn't buy it you... because of, of of all this. And then uh, it went. This is this is we That's put a mock uh, up. <laughs> <laughs> no, we we BMW put BMW wheels, the E forty six wheels. Yeah. So we put the uh, the body of the P one, like we took everything off, and then we put it on my Noble chassis. Oh. Yeah, like it's oh, it kind of fits. I know. It's yeah, it's like it, it kind of sort of does fit. And we yeah. had some some E forty six wheels laying around, so we just put them there. Oh, and it's I'm a good like, way to store the body panels, I guess. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I just said, uh, you know, haters will say I don't finish my projects. So, like, um, are, those, are all those panels fully wrecked? Is there are they? Is there anything usable? Uh, yeah. So I'm going to be using the hood and the side skirts. Okay. Uh, the rear clamshell we have cut up. Uh, in order, because I have a new body, uh-huh. and uh, the way the new body sits, um, there is like an internal lattice structure in uh, the stock uh, clamshell. So we had to cut that away. So in order to do that, we had uh-huh. to literally just like destroy this hundred thirty thousand dollar part. Um, so that's fun, but I get to cut up a lot of carbon and then send it to my fans. You know, cool. so that'll be oh fun. yeah, you make little bits and yeah, yeah. yeah. So so what's the story with the battery? So the battery is, uh, if you were to buy it new from McLaren, uh, they will give you a new upgraded uh, Speedtail battery, which is smaller, has less range, and it's about one hundred sixty thousand dollars. So I'm sorry, you said upgraded, and then you said smaller and has less. Yes, range. yes, it's smaller and less range, but the um, the power that it gives, the power delivery, is about the same. And the only upgrade is that it's lighter. Oh, okay. So they go because the car is lighter, it's faster. Right. But it doesn't actually give you any more like power delivery or anything. You've already collected your London tax break so the rate <laughs> yeah. doesn't yeah. matter anymore yeah it doesn't matter yeah. um, but uh, so I've been working with a company called V Engineering out in the UK and they are trying to develop their own battery but as you can imagine it's a little bit difficult yeah so, the market for it is like tiny tiny <laughs> how many P1s do they sell 375 plus yeah. 50 GTRs yeah, or something like so that so not a lot yeah but if you do it at $100,000 a pop that's like it's not nothing, right. you know. And wait, uh, did you say the price of the McLaren battery? Uh, one hundred and sixty. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's it's about one hundred and sixty. So what I'm trying to do is like I have. Um, I mean, look, that's an enormous amount of money. Yes. But if it exists, yeah, and or you could spend, you could save sixty grand on something that doesn't exist yet. Yes, but here's the thing: the one hundred and sixty grand does not exist. Oh, uh, okay. McLaren will, if you are on the waiting list for a P1 battery, you have been on this waiting list for a very long time. So does that mean there's people with dead P1s? Yes, yes, a yeah, lot really? of them. A lot no of them. No way. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the, the, the little little known secret, and I hope this doesn't you know mess up any relationship you have with McLaren, I, I respect them a lot, but like if you own a P1, McLaren has screwed you. Like if you try to get a battery, they will, you know, it, it's gonna be six months to a year, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, P1s that aren't driven, which is all of them, uh, they have issues with their hybrid drive assemblies because their leaks start to, uh, their leaks, their seals start to leak. Got to drive your cars, people. Exactly. Oh, especially a McLaren. Yeah, yeah. especially a McLaren. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but their, uh, yeah, the hybrid drive assembly seal starts to leak. And then it actually, so that car has a physical clutch, like an actual clutch um, that goes between the engine and the uh, the e-motor. Mm-hmm. And uh, once the once the leak happens, it goes right on the clutch. It leaks into it the leaks clutch. It leaks into the clutch. Oh, that's and then. And then you can't use E mode. Like you yeah. can do everything else, you know, the car can start and all that stuff, but it won't go into E mode because it's like the clutch is doing its w- weird thing. Um, so with me, I have an option of either getting on a waiting list and paying 160 grand 
money I don't, I don't have. Yeah. Uh, or I can get in touch with all the engineers that I know that have worked on the P1 battery and know all the ins and outs and stuff, and then I can try to make my own. So, so this is... <laughs> That's the most Tavarish thing I've ever heard. It, it's, it, it is, it is. What so, could possibly go wrong? So, I've, I mean, I've, I've talked to uh, Rich Benoit, Rich Rebuilds, uh -huh. and, um, you know, we, he helped me take, take out the, the P1 battery. Um, so I have the battery on the side of my building because, like, I'm not putting that shit in my building because yeah. it's such a fire risk. Um, is but, it warm if you touch it? No, no. I mean, it's it, glowing. It has, there's, there's zero voltage. I mean, it's it's a it's salt water and it's it's bad. I can see the headline now. You're like, I drove my rebuilt charger to a manganese mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did he die? Well, <laughs> yeah. So, um, and I know that that sounds like you know Denzel and American Gangster, but go to the source, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go to the jungle. Yeah. Um, but uh, I. When I say make my own battery, I mean, like, we take it apart. We see what cells it uses, try to replace, like, the actual cells yeah, and, yeah. And, and everything. I'm not saying, like— I bought 4,000 yeah. Panasonic laptops. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're super cheap on eBay. Yeah, um, yeah but, like, it's it's going to require a lot of uh, a lot of engineering and, and whatnot. But uh, um, it sucks because the car won't start without the battery, like, without the high-voltage battery. Right. Um, and— you know, I have the option of deleting the battery and then basically making it a 720. You know, just kind of that looks like a P1. That looks like a P1, but right. I don't. I don't want to do that. Like, I, I want it's this kind of, car. That would be kind of whack. It, it would yeah, be. Yeah. yeah. It's it's like taking the easy way out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard. Uh, I know for a fact. Actually, I didn't hear. I know for a fact that a La Ferrari battery is 250 grand. Yeah, I I, I believe that. And they die a lot. Yes, they do. Yeah, that's yeah. sort of the. The, the BTS secret mm -hmm. of the La Ferrari. So the 918s. Those nice. batteries die all the, the The Holy time. Trinity cars, they their batteries their batteries die because uh, people don't drive them. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, this is going to you know go up in value. The interesting thing about the P1 is that it is the rarest of those three cars. Yeah. And I think if this battery thing and long-term like usability is fixed, because like everything else... It's like a regular 12C. Right. Like it's there's there's no unreliable component there. It's 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 fairly old school, and everything can be you know uh, repaired with like a, an MDS, so the uh, the McLaren Diagnostics uh -huh. uh, thing, and it's it's fairly easy. I, I mean the the cluster, uh, it's pretty funny. Um, the cluster in the P1 is the same cluster as a early 570. So sure. so it's like they're all they all use like interconnected parts. Did the did you when you were at um, Goodwood mm -hmm. did. Did you talk to the Lanzante people yes. about this? Yes. And they had they had no useful information for you? Well, here, here's the thing. Lanzante charges, you know, two million dollars to, to do a conversion on a on a GTR, which is already two million dollars. Yeah. You know? Um so it's not like I'm like, hey, do you have any spare parts you can give me? <laughs> no, like, but like do they have any knowledge that they yeah, can share? Yeah, about yeah. I talked to them I talked to them on the phone, but I'm not going like I didn't want to push too much because I, f for some reason, I don't want to be in the in the area where they go. Oh well, you know, you're modifying a P1, or we're modifying a P1. So we, you know, you, like we we're gonna we're gonna make your life hell because we're gonna cut off this part supplier, or we're gonna do this, you yeah. know. So I'm like, I'd like, rather, dude. I'm not running a fucking business. Exactly. I'm, I'm not selling fix, this to anybody. I'm to fix one car. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm trying to fix my car. Um, but uh, what, one thing I did that's notice, like I, I asked fucking what the seat. What I was like, dude, what is in this soup that's so delicious? They're like, we're not telling you. I'm like, I'm not gonna fucking. <laughs> I'm not opening up I'm my not own gonna restaurant. Open a soup stand, man. I just want to know why it's so delicious. <laughs> <laughs> fucking secret ass ingredients. Like, come on, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, one thing I did notice though, that when I um. When I went to Lanzante stand and uh, I took my uh, two friends Sounds there like as well. Sounds like a country. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Lanz Lanzante stand. <laughs> I am from Lanzante stand. Um, like, I I looked at you know the body work and the mechanical work and all that stuff. I'm like, I could do this. This is not. This is not. Like, I I'm serious. Like, yeah. if you if you look at it, it's it's really not like. There's nothing. There's no. It's not magic. You yeah, know. Yeah. It's just a. It's just a lot of work. So yeah. I'm like, I could. I could totally do this. So that, that gave me a little bit more, you know, like w once you see things in the flesh, you can see like little imperfections yeah. and you're like, oh, these panel gaps aren't great or like, like okay, I understand. I'm, like, this isn't this, this crazy, uh, you know, perfect thing that I was building up in my own head. And then you see like a Koenigsegg Regera and you go like, oh my God, I, I, don't you know, know. I, can't, do I, I can't do that. Yeah, I can't I, do I, that. I, that. That's, yeah. that's insane. Yeah. You see the Gamera at, uh, God, at yeah. it looks fucking cool. Dude, Koenigsegg is, is like, 
it's it's a supercar of supercars, like yeah. a supercar of hypercars, right? It's uh, it just the the fit and finish is so vastly different from what you would get on even like a high end McLaren or a Lamborghini. It's it's crazy. Um, I mean, it's it's literally this, you know. That's it's, Gunter Works. Yeah, it's it's Gunter so crazy. Works is doing the E30 M3 now. I'm very excited. Ooh. Yeah, that very was that, that's big news. Yeah, and those guys are huge BMW guys. Like you know, they're they're Vorsteiners, so they've right. been doing BMW stuff for a long time. And, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, that bet, was cool to see. I bet what they build is gonna be fucking pretty sweet. Um, so Arnie, with uh, I mean, is the is the name your you know the name Cannonball Garage, and you are of the the cannonball folk what uh i mean uh, 2020 when the roads were empty that was sort of peak cannonball i guess yeah and uh what is that what is that culture up to these days you know not much um you know it's, it's the traffic's fucking them <laughs> yeah right right exactly that, that's the thing it's like to to break that record i don't even i don't even want to think about how you would have to drive yeah. to break that record, and in Cannonball is all about safety. You know, it's about proving that qualified drivers and good cars can get across the country safely. So, you know, I think if anybody were to go out and somehow shave a couple minutes off, like they would have to drive way outside of the spirit of Cannonball, and that's something that I'm not willing to do. But yeah, that was that was peak Cannonball. Are people? coming based on the name of your shop are people coming to you and asking you to build them cannonball cars no not really so, you know some police i do police countermeasures like radar and laser systems and that kind of stuff so i do a little bit of that and that's mostly a passion project you know i don't push it too hard but it was mostly to associate you know me with you know a garage and right when did you open cannonball garage uh it was june of 2020. oh wow so pretty recent okay. yeah but you did AMS and all that stuff before that. Yeah, so I, I sold my shares of AMS in 2017, took a couple years off to take care of my elderly aunt and my dad kind of in their last couple years of life. And then uh, once they had passed, I started uh, started Cannonball Garage. You know, I, I kind of missed having the um, the tools and the shop because that was the biggest thing. That was the biggest like shock after having a shop for 17 years. It was like all of a sudden it's like, oh, I don't have a shop anymore, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? and I'm just sending my cars to you know all my friends' shops and stuff. So it's yeah. really it's really just going back to being a customer really sucks. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that that it did. And, I can and do this myself. And the reason I chose McLaren is I do a lot of these rallies like Gold Rush and Ultimate Road Rally and Adventure Drives and stuff. And I talk to all these McLaren people, and they're like, "Man, I love my car, but it's impossible to get service. You know, that you need specialty tools. Nobody services them. I mean, if you want to work on McLarens, like." If you've got if you have a shop and you have two customers in McLaren's, you're not going to go out and spend a hundred grand on diagnostic equipment, the hydraulic bleeding machine, and and all these things that you need to work on these cars. So yeah. it's like nobody specializes in them, and everybody I talk to is like, man, if you specialize in those things, like you would kill it. And and they were right. We had we had tuned a couple of them at AMS, mm -hmm. so we're somewhat familiar with them. We'd we'd done downpipes on one before, so just kind of jumped in and. You know, the, the rest is history. It's been uh, mm -hmm. it's been fun, and you know, Ivan's been great. You know, the, who built your engine? Like he loves new things, like yeah. learning and dissecting. Like, yeah. so it's been fu it's been fun to kind of figure these things out because there's really no information out there about these cars. I think it's probably intentional. Yeah, right? No, exactly. It's like mm -hmm. they make it difficult to you know they they don't want other people messing with their stuff. Also, I mean, not not a lot of people modify cars in that way. I mean, the McLaren owner is, is a little bit different than, like, say, uh, an Audi R8 or a Huracan owner, you know, where, where they might go and get a twin turbo kit and, uh, you know, want to make a thousand horsepower with a McLaren owner is like, oh, dude, you know, a tune in a downpipe or something. Right. I mean, they're great. I like them because uh, bang for the buck, it's the best driving experience car for the money. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the sexiest car for the money. And then, you know, you do tune and downpipe and you're as fast as a, you know, basic twin turbo R8. Mm -hmm. And that's fine for most people, honestly. You know, people don't go as crazy. I'm used to Nissan GTRs and Evos where, mm -hmm. you know, like we're making 1,000 horsepower Evos and 2,500 horsepower GTRs. You know, it's kind of a nice to take a, take a break and build some calmer cars that you know yeah. aren't aren't so problematic I saw, I saw a guy valet his gtr the other day and it was like wrapped in like a tan color and i looked at the back tires and they were hoosiers <laughs> and he had, he had like proper drag slicks on the back and kind of skinnies in the front and had a bunch of stickers on it and he this he, they, they left it at the curb where he put it he's like <laughs> this stays here yeah, yeah. okay he's aggressive at a certain point it's like 
what are, we, what are you doing with that? I mean, unless you're racing it, literally racing it. So, right. Yeah. yeah. I think there would have to be race cars that, like, you know, 2000s, you know, 500. Like, you can say, yeah, it's it's street driven, but, you know, I, I me and, and Arnie and, and Ivan, we uh, we differ on opinions on, like, what's street driven or not. Yeah. Like, uh, the, that Johnny Bomer guy um, that had the uh, 4GT that went 310 miles an hour. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he was like, oh, yeah, it's a street car. I'm like, bro, like, it's. It has a full cage in it? it? Like, it has a full yeah. cage in it. Yeah. Like, for, for me, like, a street driven car is, you know, your, uh, your wife. I've asked you, can you pick up my mom from the airport? Yeah, you yeah. Know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. It's like, let's. That's a street-driven car. It's like you're yeah. not taking the thirty-five hundred horsepower. Yeah, you can go car. a little farther than that, but yeah. I. But like a seven-second GTR, mm -hmm. you can easily be a street car. You know, that's, just that's just with a bolt-in, you know, rear cage. Wow. You know, not you know, not a full thing, but yeah, it's crazy. Well, they're that's... street driven. They're street legal, right? So I think maybe the three hundred mile an hour. Mile per hour car had a plate on it, and like you. Well, can it's Florida, so it. I mean, yeah. you could. You right. could it's pretty much. <laughs> right. Legality is a yeah. real, <laughs> it's a real stretch here. Yeah, but yeah. are you going to drive on the street? No, not really. Yeah. No, I, the GTRs particularly, they're such a slippery slope, because you, you, you get used to a, you get used to anything, right? Right. But it's, I don't, I don't find GTRs to be that interesting, and the people that I know that tune them can't stop and they keep going for more and more and more right which to me says something about the fact that this car isn't all that interesting because right. you, it just it's not it's not delivering even at a thousand horsepower 1100 it's just not delivering the excitement no it's a really a it's a I don't like GTRs particularly but I have to respect the performance sure, you get sure, out of them. Sure, yeah. Um, I I still work on them here and there. I don't really advertise it, but they you know they come in and out, and you know we fix problem ones or whatever. But I've stayed kind of connected. We we have a race every year called the DCT World Cup. It used to be called GTR World Cup, but you know the, the GTR is getting older and there's less people, so now we've opened it up to anything with a DCT car. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean the performance you get out of these cars is really impressive. But why is the car so big and heavy? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like it's just it's like they could have made it like three quarter scale, and that would have been like a much better deal. Like why on earth is it so huge and heavy? I don't yeah. know, that's why nine nine seven turbos are where it's at. For yes. You know, which same. which car won the DCT Cup like most recently? Uh, and it, sorry, and what is the what does the competition entail? Well, it was a GTR that won because the GTRs are just the the faster because they're running six seconds. Lamborghinis are getting close. I think with the records like seven. So it's quarter 20. mile showdown. Quarter mile. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a quarter mile. It's at Bradenton Motorsports Park. Yeah, it's so the Amira can enter. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a GCT now. That'll be interesting. We'll be actually. there <laughs> when you when you guys. I'd like to see if you if you get, are interested when that the Amira uh, Lotus with the AMG uh, four cylinder. It's actually could be pretty interesting for the tuners. It's got the same motor as the GLA 45. Mm -hmm. That's same a good box. That is a really good engine. I remember our, my last days with AMS. I mean, we were running like on a stock. And those things run 26 pounds of boost. Yeah, Holy stock gosh. the CLA yeah. 45. Yeah, wow. we were pushing like 55 pounds of boost on a stock engine. What? Yeah. <laughs> so yes. imagine, like imagine that in a yeah. 3,000 pound Lotus. They are, fun they are, as fuck, mm -hmm. probably. Yeah, be rowdy. I mean, yeah, no kidding. Yeah, I'm getting one of those uh, when I go to UK in a week and a half. And Amira? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing over there? Uh, Shed Fest. Uh, it is uh, Alex Kirsten, Auto Alex. Mm -hmm. That's he a, has a, that's he a has fun a, name. Yeah, Shed Fest. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just a bunch of, you know, shit boxes. Yeah. Um, Alex is cool. He's Alex is really dude, cool. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to UK in a, in a week and a half. And then uh, two weeks later, I got to go back, back to UK for uh, petrol hedonism. So, oh right! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool, good so, times. So that, that, yeah, that'll be fun. And well, then, and then SEMA, and then hopefully I build a P1 in between there. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, hopefully you find a battery. Yeah, that's 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 a pain in the ass to not be able to get that. Realistically, I don't think the car is going to be running and driving by SEMA, but I want to have all the uh, the body panels there. We'll have the engine done and all that stuff. So it'll you know the battery is the last thing to go in the car anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but so you uh, can make it look finished. No, we'll we'll just have it. You know, this is this is the concept, and then afterwards we'll we'll do all the like. So I, I'm I'm not sure if you're familiar, but um, I plan like here's my big plan with the car. Uh, we have a bespoke body. We're going to call it the P1 Evo. Um, so we are uh, doing a uh, a big engine build. So we want to make around 1,200 uh, wheel horsepower on the uh, the engine, and um, and you know, and then afterwards we're going to try to put uh, like a speed tail. Um, like electric motor, which makes around 300 horsepower. So figure 1,400 to 1,500 uh, horsepower. And then uh, we want to uh, make it the fastest McLaren in the world. 
So right now it's that's a speed tail, 250 miles an hour. Um, with the gearing, uh, and if we increase the rev limit to around 9,000 RPM, uh, we can get to 260, maybe 270, something like that. There's going to be a lot of work that we need to do with aero. Uh, so yeah. a car has to go to the wind tunnel and all that stuff. But uh, right now we have a GTR body kit, but with a lower aero, pro- aero profile with the uh, the stock bumper and you know it, it's gonna it's gonna look cool uh, but you know we have to figure out suspension what's suspension gonna do after 200 miles an hour uh, we have to do tuning and then there's gonna be a lot of custom stuff like I'm gonna have a different gauge cluster like a, a more modern one um, like we're gonna do a 570 gauge cluster which is like an, an entire LCD screen mm-hmm. instead of the three uh, ones um, we're gonna do a custom like velocity mode where the you know car kind of hunkers down and you know the the spoiler comes down. So there's a lot of work to do, um, and you know we have uh, Ben Collins has expressed interest in doing it. Um, Sweet. Yeah, we uh, we. Last time I went to UK, uh, we we made really good friends with Ben. You know, had had dinner with him a, a few nights. He's a really good dude. Yeah, Ben's all right. Yeah, Ben Ben's he's a, used to driving fucking sketchy ass cars so he's good uh, yeah ab- absolutely <laughs> yeah. but like we're, we're also trying to do as much like in the way of safety like we're not just you know bolting panels together we're like how how did the factory do this how can we make it so you know this thing is going to have a lot of air um over it like are we making sure that everything's uh you know fastened together properly and you know what about brakes what about tires what about all this um alcon's going to be remaking the brakes uh the originals are akabono so alcon's going to be making new brakes for it uh, we're working with HRE to make custom wheels. We're going to do, you know, cup twos. Those are good to 300 miles an hour. So, like, all, all this stuff, like, you know, adds up. And hopefully, by the end of that, we'll have a car that, like, can do things and also is it looks really cool. Yeah. That's fucking crazy. Uh, it's That seems like a lot of work. <laughs> no, nah, it's fine. It's fine. We got, we got plenty of time, dude. Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's awesome. Well... Thanks for coming to visit. Absolutely. Good to see you guys, as always. Um, uh, It makes me a little sad you left the car at Jay's, but I get it. Uh, We can, let's let's. He's only going to put up with that for like a week. That's fine. Is that car, how is that car getting back to Florida? Yeah, I I got got a transport. I got a transport. Oh, you do? All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, (laughs) It's not not, he doesn't have cars there. (laughs) Yeah, I know. He's probably looking at me like, what the fuck is this thing? Yeah, get get the (laughs) shit out of here. Um, yeah, of course, uh, Cannonball Garage, uh, Chicago area, yep. if you've got a McLaren, and uh, go watch Freddie's YouTube channel. You know where to find that shit. Mm-hmm. You get a lot more views than we do, so that's not a problem. Uh, thanks, boys. Good show. <laughs> good time. So yeah. This See you at, are you Pebble? No? Uh, no, I'm no going Pebble? home after this. Going Pebble? I am not. All right. Well, I'm flying solo then. Fine. All right. Well, let me <laughs> know how it goes. Be. Have fun in England. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you. Uh, we only have one show next week because I will be at Pebble Beach and Zach's going to be in the woods camping with his old man. So nice. uh, the only show will be Thursday next week, right? Not We'll, ha- we'll not have a Tuesday show. Correct. Only only a Thursday show next week. Correct. So, uh, yeah, when you only get one notification instead of two next week, that's why. <laughs>